Okay, so this video is kind of a mixture of a vlog and a tutorial on an external GPU dock I made for my laptop. It was a fun project, but I encountered a lot of weird quirks and problems along the way. Since external GPUs are so finicky and unpredictable, it's really hard to just make a one-size-fits-all tutorial. The process will be different for every combination of computer, graphics card, and interface. This video is an attempt to document everything I've learned from my particular setup. Hopefully it will save someone working on a similar project some time and frustration. I'm going to divide this video into three sections, hardware, software, and fabrication. Hardware will be about what devices I'm using and how I connected them together. Software will be what I had to do on my computer to make everything work. And then after that, I'll show you how I fabricated this nifty enclosure thingy. Okay, so my laptop is an HP Envy X360 from 2014. It has 16 gigs of RAM and it doesn't have a discrete GPU. The built-in Intel HD 4400 can barely get 20 to 30 FPS on Fortnite at all the lowest settings and resolution. It just runs like absolute trash. The CPU is an i7-4510U, which is actually pretty powerful. It has a base clock of 2 GHz and it can boost up to 3.1. Unfortunately, the cooler is so bad that it totally handicaps the entire system. When I first got it, it could only maintain like 1.5 gigahertz under load. And now that I've added liquid metal and undervolted the CPU, it can maintain 2 or 2.2 if like the fan is clean. I have the cooler in the right position underneath the heat pipes, but it's, it's not great. If I'm playing a game and the integrated graphics are maxed out, the CPU needs to be limited to like 900 megahertz or the whole system will just overheat and turn off. And the external GPU interface I'm using is an EXP GDC Beast V8. It has a PCIe slot on the top for the graphics card and it has some ports on the side. The only two ports I'm using are the 8 pin power input and the HDMI PCIe plug. That's connected via this cable to where my Wi-Fi card used to be. Since I still want internet, I got this little Wi-Fi dongle. Surprisingly, it's very fast and I haven't had any issues with reception. It does cost me one USB port, but this port is held together with crazy glue so it probably wouldn't have lasted very long anyway. To power this setup, I'm using a Corsair SF450 power supply. 450 watts is way more than any normal graphics card would need, but it was the lowest wattage modular power supply I could find in the right size and that's important because all the wires on a non-modular power supply wouldn't have fit into my enclosure. And for my GPU, I'm using a 1050 Ti from Zotac. I have the PCIe cable routed through my laptop so it comes out on the left. That way it doesn't interfere with the mouse. I was originally planning to glue a female to female HDMI adapter to the inside of my laptop as like a port where I could just plug in the GPU dock using another HDMI cable. Unfortunately, the extra cable length just made it too unstable. Most of the time, it would run in PCIe 1.1 mode, which is really slow. I was using Unigen Heaven to benchmark my setups, and you can see in 1.1 mode, it just runs like utter garbage. Occasionally, it would go into PCIe 2.0, but either way, there was like a bunch of stutters and lockups, and sometimes the screen would just go black for like 10 seconds. I also tried wrapping both cables completely in aluminum foil for better shielding. And I forgot to take pictures of that, but you can see a little bit of it in the corner of this image. But unfortunately, that made no difference whatsoever. I decided to just use the single cable connected directly to the beast. Now it's always in PCIe 2.0 mode and it runs great. But there is a little bit less like a uh, range from my laptop. It has to be right next to it. Another slight annoyance is that I can't use my laptop's built-in screen when I have the external GPU plugged in. I tried it on another laptop before my own, which was a lot weaker actually, and the external monitor worked fine. So as I said, the results in process can be different for every setup. When I use this HDMI to VGA cable, the monitor doesn't light up until I get to the login screen. So like the BIOS menu, the GRUB menu, all that stuff is just like black. If the NVIDIA driver isn't installed on Windows, then you don't even get any image at all. All the other cables I've used just work as expected so you can see the boot messages and the GRUB and the BIOS and stuff. I don't really know exactly why this is, but I'm guessing it has to do with VGA being analog and DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort being digital. So maybe the cable is doing some sort of conversion that requires the drivers. And finally, it's worth mentioning that the Beast has two switches on it. I usually use a paper clip to access them. 
the ATX power switch controls when the GPU is turned on. On means the GPU is always getting power and the fans will always spin. Off means it will only get powered when the connected computer is turned on. Both positions work for me, but from what I've read online, it's recommended to set it to off if you're having problems. And the PTD switch controls the timing of the GPU being initialized. I don't understand what it does too well, so I'm not going to try to explain it, but I can assure you that setting it on the wrong setting won't damage your hardware. It's just timing. It doesn't affect voltage or clock speed or anything. Every position works for me, but if you're having trouble, just try each position and hopefully one will work. The most important thing about my software configuration is that the eGPU will not work at all when I have my computer in UEFI mode. Before installing Windows, I had to turn on legacy support in my BIOS. Then I had to select the non-UEFI boot option for the installer. Usually there'll be like a one that's just like the name of your USB flash drive and another that's like UEFI Windows. And if you select the UEFI one, it will try to install using UEFI. So make sure you select the non-UEFI option in the BIOS menu. And also, I was having trouble once I installed Windows with the Windows Boot Manager not working every time, but it seems to be working fine now, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. If you're having trouble with the Windows Boot Manager, just try installing Ubuntu alongside Windows so you can use Grub as your bootloader instead. Ubuntu also has graphics drivers built in, so you can test your setup without needing to worry about those. On Windows, you should be able to get an image even without drivers. You won't be able to like play games or anything, but it will allow you to download and install the latest driver for your GPU. Oh, and make sure you turn off fast startup. If you're using an Nvidia card, it probably won't work even after you install the driver. If you right click the card in device manager, it will likely say error 43. Luckily, this guy called Nando4, who's awesome, made a batch script that automatically fixes that. It's free and super easy to use. I'll put the link in the description. You might get a false virus detection when you download it because Windows, but you can safely ignore that. Once you've downloaded it, just extract it and double click. It will ask you for admin privileges and then automatically fix your error 43. And the site that it's on, eGPU.io, is also really helpful. It has build guides, hardware reviews, and a forum, all specifically dedicated to external GPUs. Now that the graphics drivers are installed, Fortnite runs great. The external GPU also has the added benefit of removing all the heat produced by the internal GPU so the CPU can run closer to its full capacity. I usually get like 70 to 80 FPS, but sometimes when there's a lot of building or action, it can go down to like 50. First, I designed the model in Blender. The 3D printer I was going to use could only print in about an 80 millimeter cube area, so I had to split the model into a bunch of different pieces. I printed all the parts at Spark Makerspace, which is an hour away from my home, so I couldn't get there very often. I'd like to thank the electronics guys for clearing my prints and switching out the filament for me. After I had all the parts, I epoxied them all together using Gorilla Epoxy. There's a top section and a bottom section, so you can get in there and like switch out the power supply and stuff, and they're held together with screws. I'm really glad I bought a bunch of extra screws because I ended up stripping a few in the beginning. The screw holes weren't threaded in the 3D printed model, so the screws were really hard to get in and out. After doing the epoxy, there were a bunch of seam marks where the epoxy was oozing out, and since the parts had warped slightly during printing, there were like some gaps in between them. The prints also had a lot of bumps and rough parts. I tried to smooth out the bumps and fill in the cracks using a combination of sandpaper, a Dremel, and Bondo, and the results were kind of meh. <laughs> After that, I epoxied on some rubber feet. And finally, I painted on a black base coat and three cans worth of Spaz Sticks Color Change paint. It's this really cool iridescent stuff, but you need a lot of coats to get a good effect, so I had to use 9 or 10 coats. I applied the paint over the period of a few weeks, giving it time to dry and waiting for good wind conditions so it wouldn't just like blow away and it would actually land on my enclosure. I also needed to make some modifications to my laptop. I used the Dremel to carve a channel for the PCIe cable and I cut a hole in the left side for it to come out. The cable ran through where my left speaker was so unfortunately that had to go, but I'm not that sad because it sounded like trash anyway. Finally, I epoxied this Velcro strap to the bottom of my computer to hold the cable somewhat out of the way when I'm not using it. And that's pretty much it. I hope you learned something from this video. 
I'd be thrilled to see your GPU project if you want to put a link in the comments, or if you have any questions, also leave those in the comments. I try not to be that guy who made the post years ago about the exact problem you're having, and then went inactive. I know how it feels. Okay, goodbye, and don't forget to obliterate that like button.